name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. We acknowledge our sins, but more importantly, the compassion, the mercy, and the love of God as we sing the Lord have mercy, the Kyrie, together. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us into healing and life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's be seated now and listen to the Word of God in the Scriptures. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in a cloud. He spoke with Moses, but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit came on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back in the camp. One was called Eldad and the other Medad. The spirit came down on them. Though they had not gone to the tent, their names were enrolled among the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then said Joshua, the son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth, my Lord Moses, stop them. Moses answered him, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets, and the Lord gave his spirit to them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, the precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. Spirit of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The Spirit of the Lord gives joy to the heart. So in them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect all his errors? From hidden faults acquit me. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. The Spirit of the Lord gives joy to the heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. An answer for the rich. Start crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting. Your clothes are all eaten up by moths. All your gold and your silver are corroding away. And the same corrosion will be your own, inherit your own sentence and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Labourers mowed your fields and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you have kept back, calling out. Realise that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth, you have had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter, you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse. Oh! 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw a man who is not one of us casting out devils in your name. And because he was not one of us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said, you must not stop him. No one who works a miracle in my name is likely to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you a cup of water to drink just because you belong to Christ, then I tell you solemnly, they will most certainly not lose their reward. But anyone who is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who have faith would be better thrown into the sea with a great millstone around their neck. And if your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter to life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell into the flame that cannot be put out. And if your foot should cause you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye should cause you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die nor their fire go out. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Does Jesus want us to mutilate ourselves? I don't think so. But he's trying to make a strong, strong point. He is saying there is worse things than having your hand cut off, your eye pulled out, and your leg cut off. And sinning is worse than that. In other words, he's trying to say sin should be avoided at any cost. He's trying to make it very clear. And what is sin? Sin is doing what God is telling us not to do. God wants us to be fully alive, fully who we are meant to be. And the guide for that, the best guide we can ever possibly have, is Jesus Christ, the incarnate God among us. And what he has given to us is, of course, his church family to guide us, to teach us, and to help us understand what God is saying to us. So it is wisdom to understand the gospel. It is wisdom to know what the gospel teaches. It is wisdom to follow the path that God has given to us. If you get a fish, you take the fish out of water, the fish will die. If you go under water, and stay there long enough, you will die too. And if we are not connected with God, we are disconnected with ourselves and with life. So Jesus is making a very strong point, and we need to remember that. Not to choose what is easy, but to choose what is right and what is good. You've heard the phrase, you cut your nose to spite your face, which means we harm ourselves when we are not in harmony with God. God wants the absolute best for us. The opening prayer of the Mass said clearly, God's power is manifest in his forgiveness and healing. And Jesus reached out to sinners. Jesus reached out to those who were on the outer, and he brought them in. And he said, now go and sin no more. He empowered people to overcome sin. He cast out Satan. He overcame the power of the devil. The devil does not have a grip on us unless we let him. 
because God's power is bigger than the devil, bigger than our own human weakness. So God is the power greater than us that can help us make a stand on whatever is leading us away from Christ and his message. And it's good to reflect in our own life. Is there something I am doing that is taking me away from being centered on Christ? And of course, at the beginning of Mass, we all apologize. We all recognize our sin. And naming it is wisdom. Because we can say, Lord, I need you. We don't need to hide from God like the story of Adam and Eve when they hid from God. God is calling us in Jesus to life and wants the best for us. With the power of God, we can make good choices. But we need to have a, a daily reflection in our lives. How was my day like today? In all of my relationships, how was I like today? Did I pray? Did I speak to God? What about myself? Is there anything I have done that has taken me away from God, from being true to myself? Any action, anything that I have done that takes me away? What about how I treat others? Have I been caring, respectful, loving, forgiving? And then how do I relate to life? To do the spiritual examine that St. Ignatius of Loyola spoke so strongly about. To examine our life, not to go feeling bad, not to go beating ourselves, but so that we can be liberated by the grace of God, set free from the obstacles and the excess burdens that we carry. God desires us to be who we are meant to be. And listening to Jesus and the commandments of his church lead us in that direction. And then in the gospel and in the first reading, we have situations where people were receiving the Holy Spirit and others said, but they're not exactly part of us. What's going on here? What are they doing? Jesus has, of course, given us the church. And in the Catholic Church, we believe strongly there is that apostolic authority. There is that link with the apostolic church and holy tradition which are very important. And Jesus did promise, I will be with the church till the end of time. Despite human weakness and frailty, the church is the teacher that Jesus has given to us. But then also we know that there are other Christians and we don't agree with all they hold and in fact disagree with some of them, but we are called to recognize that God loves them as well. And we are called to be respectful and loving to wherever God blows and wherever God wills. God is bigger than all of us put together. So without denying the truth of the church, without denying any of that, because that's really true and we need that, we also recognize that God's power is in all people as God wills, as God wills. And God alone knows how God wills. We don't decide that. We don't determine that. That's none of our business. It is our business to teach correctly. It is our business to teach what is right and to hold on to it. That is important. We don't negotiate that. That's very important because we don't want to be wishy-washy in what we believe in our faith. It is important that we understand, practice, and live our faith and the teachings of our church. But it's not our business to judge other people. We are called to live by our example and, of course, explain to those who want to or are ready to listen, why we believe what we believe. That is important. That is important to keep being light of the world and salt of the earth. Thank God for Jesus, who is indeed that way, truth, and life, who acts every day in our lives in such a special way to the sacraments, to the life of the church. Let us now profess together the Apostles' Creed, which has come down to us.
from the early church, from the apostolic times. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we put our prayers in faith before the living God. We pray for Pope Francis and the leaders of our church. May the Holy Spirit powerfully remind the entire church to call to look after the little ones and the forgotten. We pray for leaders of the world. May they use their influence and resources always for the good of their constituents. We pray for ourselves. May we always seek first the kingdom of God and may we never be ruled by self selfishness or greed. We pray for all migrants and refugees. May they find safety and peace in the midst of generous and welcoming countries. May Australia always uphold the rights and protection of migrants and refugees. We pray for all those who suffer poverty because of war, famine or natural disaster. May greed and selfishness be always defeated by spirit-filled charity everywhere. We pray for those who have died and for those who mourn. May the risen Jesus give them comfort and peace. We pray for those who have recently gone to their eternal rest. And for those whose anniversary occurs about this time. and for the ancestors of the Larrakia people on whose land we respectfully stand. We remember, as we mentioned at the beginning of Mass, Mark and Max, welcoming them into the fullness of life for their families in their time of grief and their friends. We also remember the St. Vincent de Paul Society, who this week celebrated 75 years of ministry within the Northern Territory. Bless its members, Lord, and call new people to volunteer to work with the St. Vincent de Paul Society in its ministry. We place before you everything that is in our hearts, the troubles in the world around us, and we pray that we all hold on to your truth of faith and love, which truly sets us free. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
As we now move into the Eucharist and we say yes to God with our hearts and life, and ask for the grace to be able to freely surrender everything to our God, like Jesus did on that cross to the Father. Let us pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid upon open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, much more than a duty and good for our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be pulled out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Bishop of this church, Bishop Eugene, our Emeritus, all the clergy who serve your people, and the entire family your son has gained for you. Remember also Max and Mark, who have been called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and we pray for the grieving families we mentioned at the beginning of Mass, but for all those in our hearts, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, through your grace, merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be coerced in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us stand for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May the peace and the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain always with you. Let us go and live the gospel. Enjoy Sunday. God bless your day.